Well, hello and welcome back to the Blue Belly Gaming Channel. On this quick video, I'm going to talk about how to build a simple habitat for the birds to appear. Uh, I, I start pretty much all of my builds off with the same basic idea. We want to go to the barriers and get this red brick and uh, I think I'm going to try to have a habitat gate maybe over here. So we want to have a window near the walkway. Uh, so we'll go ahead and, oops, we'll go ahead and do that first. Now you might be wondering, how do you know how big to make it? And honestly, I don't. I don't know how big I want to make it. Um, but you could either do that research ahead of time, or you can just, you know, sort of get a, a feel for the amount of space that you have in your own in your own zoo setup. So I'm gonna put that around there. Then for the habitat gate, I'm actually gonna go up here on this corner. So our keeper can come in here and then uh let's not. Okay, so we want to select this one and we'll just turn this into glass. Now if you have a more shy animal you won't want to put glass, the regular glass, you want to do two-way glass. So we'll have to see how the Baird's Tapir feels about this. Now, I know initially you might think, what the heck, you know, if the animal's all the way in the back, people won't be able to see it. But remember, our concern is for the balance between the people and the animal. So the first thing you want to do here, once you get a basic setup, we don't know if they want more space, less space, what kind of toys, any of that stuff. So we want to come here to animal storage. I don't have any bears to peers in here. So I'm going to go to the animal market, which is where we're going to go to the filter. And we're going to go to bears to peer. And here we go. There are a few available for me. So I'm going to go ahead and adopt this one for cash and this one so we'll have a male and a female and when we go to animal storage we can see them right here they're in the trade center and we want to select both of these and send them to the zoo and we're gonna send them here while we wait for our keeper to bring them over we want to come down here to the habitat tab and go into the filters and choose species and then choose birds to appear. Okay, and once you have that, now I know for some of you, you're gonna say, I don't have all these options. Well, you don't have them because maybe you still need to research a lot of these items. But because I've been playing this zoo for a while, I've researched all these. Remember, the items can be across different species. So like this plant screen, I happen to know I got that for my hippos a long time ago so that the peers are able to use it and so on with many other things now I could just plop down a few of these things in fact what I'm gonna start with is a dish for their food if I can find so these are for water well we'll go ahead and do the water pipe maybe I'll put that there so people can watch them get a drink and we should have a food trough, large, medium. I think we have, since we are getting two, we'll do a medium size. Now, other creators or whatever people would say, move this so it's closer to the gate so that the person coming to feed them doesn't have to walk all the way down here. Or make your entrance gate maybe over here, away from where the public sees, you know, something like that. But for right now, we'll just, well, it's not that hard to move them. Maybe we maybe we move the water to this obstructed, uh, excuse me, and we'll move the food up there. Just we'll go with that for now. Uh, our animal's not here yet, so I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. They should be on their way. Which typically, aha, typically as soon as I get impatient, they show up. So here we go. Zipactinol, what a name. Okay, Zipactinol is a Baird's Tapir, and he's super excited to be out of the box, and we have to take a look and see what their needs are. 
the other ones in. I like to wait until they take a couple of steps and not just click on them right away. You know, they'll usually kind of pay attention. Okay. So they have no enrichment. We have a few things to look at here. So I'm going to pause it before they get too upset. Now their animal welfare is not great because we haven't done anything yet. So first we're going to click on the, the space. They have way more space than they need. So I could, if I want to, bring the walls in. And I probably won't for this build. But if I was going to be, you know, if this was like a permanent fixture in my zoo, I probably would bring that in. Because you don't want to have a ton of space for an animal that doesn't actually want or need a ton of space. But because of this, they need water. So we're going to have to deal with that pretty much right away. So we'll go to terrain. We'll make a little bit of... Uh, you know, an indentation here. And then what I like to do, you don't have to do this, but I like to, you know, put some some sand in it, or you could do, you know, more of like this, this coarse sand down in here, and put the softer sand around the outside, however you want to do that. And then for the water, um, give them some calm water. So they should be able to get down in there and get back out. So we'll, we'll hold on. So they don't like all this long grass. They want more dirt. So that should be simple enough. They want more dirt and less grass. You can, you know, obviously adjust your tools here to make this a little bit more, uh, a little bit easier. I don't want to take away all of their long grass, but they don't seem to like it a whole lot. So... There we go. We got those all good to go. And we need to unpause for it to calculate this, so don't be scared yet. And then we want to go back to habitat to address the hard shelter issue. So maybe we give them something along these lines. Go. Uh, one thing you can do is bring this down if you don't want it where they have to step up into it. That's really kind of up to every individual. I, I like to do two beds also, which is not required by any stretch. And then remember to close out of that so that when you add other things, it doesn't incorporate them. So we'll click on this and we haven't done any enrichment yet. So let's see if we can get our navigable swim area correct. So we click play. It registered the hard shelter. It's calculating both. Boom. We got green on both of these. So just let me explain this for a second because this is a difficult thing that some people don't always get. In order for it to be a navigable swimming area, there it has to be shallow or uh, this. it can't be too steep for the animal to climb in and climb back out. So that's why I tried to make this gradual. It's, it, it doesn't need to be super deep. Now, Again, this is another thing that in this area, I, I might not put the water here uh, because of concerns about it growing stagnant. But if you, if you look, I have some equipment in place to keep the, it from getting stagnant for the hippos who are right across the, the road from these. So you might want to pay attention to that as well but for right now I just want to show you how to get this set up now they do need some plant coverage and you might be wondering how do I get the plant coverage right you want to go to you when you click on this you check down here it says South and Central America grassland temperate and tropical so we need to go to nature and then under filters you can you can go to South Central America and then for biome, we want grassland, temperate, and tropical. So grassland, temperate, and tropical. So it will get rid of all those other ones and keep... This is all good. They like all of this. So we can give them... I think that's not supposed to be down underneath the water. I think that was supposed to be on top of the water. Oops. But you get the idea. Uh, we can give them a palm tree. I like reeds if I can find them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Reeds are, reeds look really good. Um, and you can, you know, do a little bit of spinning there. I think, yeah, you can bring some down a bit, which I think, you know, looks a little bit nicer. 
and now coverage is at 3%. Um, so you can decide how cheesy you want to do this or how genuine you want to do it. Sometimes I get a little spammy with different things. Uh, a mossy rock could look cool in here. Oh, no, does this register as a plant is the question. No, it does not appear to register as a plant. So, you know, kind of get some of this here. and Maybe we go back and get a few more reeds. We don't want a huge tree, right? We don't, probably don't want that. Where did I see the reeds? They were right... Yeah, here we go. Some common reeds. So maybe we put some of these in and do kind of a little spin like that. And we're at 11%. We're so close, right? We're so close. Let's get a few more trees. Put one there. Maybe another one over here. And a little little curving one there and there we go we got our coverage so something along these lines could be that was a little too close for comfort there sometimes the camera angles on this can be pretty challenging but you get the idea of what we're going for here has a nice peaceful little area and if we take a look at what else they need a little bit of enrichment so we go back to habitat and I like to put the enrichment over by the window if I can so you know we'll give them a little ball here and uh, maybe we maybe we put this keep hitting the wrong button I apologize put something like this over there so they'll run through it and people can watch and let's go ahead and unpause and see how the enrichment looks boom boom enrichment the plant screen is not quite enough for toy enrichment so you might want to find another one what is that aquatic pack I do not have okay and a cardboard box really wouldn't think they would like a cardboard box, but there you go. That gets it to for us. So now as we look through here, uh, everybody's happy. They, they like the setup. So let's make sure that she's happy as well. Everybody is thrilled. It's a really simple, it took us less than 15 minutes to get this all set up for these guys. And, uh, you know, obviously you're going to want to put donation buckets here, maybe some education here, and you want to make sure you address this water so it doesn't go stagnant. But otherwise, I think you're probably good to go with this setup. Thanks so much for checking out the video. If you found it helpful, actually what would be really cool for me is if you'd uh, like it and then leave a comment that says like, hey, I learned how to do something because of this video. That will encourage me to make more videos like this. And if you have a special animal request that I haven't done yet, uh, do drop that in the comments and I'll see if I can make a, a, a quick tip, you know, how-to guide for that animal as well. Thanks again. Bye for now.